Lake Powell enters December 2025 at an elevation of 3,542.56 feet, a number that instantly raises concern for anyone who has followed the reservoir's fragile recovery over the past few years. This level places the lake 157 feet below full pool, and the charts from this year tell a story that becomes more troubling the deeper we look. When we rewind the calendar to early 2025, the reservoir was sitting above 3,570 feet. Since then, the graph shows a long steady slide, one that has accelerated during the fall months. Unlike some previous years that benefited from strong summer inflows, 2025 is finishing with the lake retreating toward the lower 3540s, a zone that historically represents operational tension and hydrological uncertainty. When examining the short-term chart focused on fall 2025, a clear peak appears in early October around 3545.5 feet before the water level begins its downward descent. The curve from October through November slopes sharply downward, losing more than three vertical feet in a matter of weeks. This steep drop is not simply a seasonal drawdown. The pace is faster and more persistent than normal. The pattern reflects the classic imbalance between upstream inflow and downstream demand, but the magnitude of the decline signals something more serious. Lake Powell is slipping toward elevations associated with limited flexibility for hydropower operations and restricted water management options. When examining the short-term chart focused on fall 2025, a clear peak appears in early October around 3545.5 feet before the water level begins its downward descent. The curve from October through November slopes sharply downward, losing more than three vertical feet in a matter of weeks. This steep drop is not simply a seasonal drawdown. The pace is faster and more persistent than normal. The pattern reflects the classic imbalance between upstream inflow and downstream demand, but the magnitude of the decline signals something more serious. Lake Powell is slipping toward elevations associated with limited flexibility for hydropower operations and restricted water management options. Expanding to the multi-month view of the full 2025 timeline, the entire year's behavior becomes clearer. The first quarter of the year shows a steady decline from the high 3570s into the mid-3560s. Then comes early May, a period when the lake typically receives its strongest seasonal recharge. But in 2025, that boost was smaller and flatter than expected. The graph shows a temporary stabilization around 3560 feet, but not an actual rebound. By June and July, the lake rises slightly, likely the result of short-term runoff, reaching just above the mid-3560s before gradually dropping again. That small bump in early summer looks healthy at first glance, but when placed in the context of previous years, it becomes clear that the rise was modest and quickly erased by sustained downstream releases. The comparison chart showing 2020 through 2025 paints an even more dramatic picture. The bold blue line representing 2025 sits well below historical curves for 2020, 2021, and 2022 during most of the year. Notably, the 2023 and 2024 lines, represented in magenta and green, show much stronger spring recoveries, lifting those years into the upper 3580s and even above 3600 feet during the peak runoff period. Those years demonstrated the lake's ability to rise sharply when conditions allowed it. But 2025 breaks that pattern. The lake not only fails to reach those seasonal highs, but it also enters the summer already at a disadvantage, ultimately ending the year far below its recent seasonal averages. This comparison reveals the most alarming feature of the 2025 decline. The gap between 2025 and the healthier years before it continues to widen, while 2023 and 2024 displayed robust seasonal cycles with clear rises and gradual declines, the 2025 line shows one long subdued increase followed by a long and uninterrupted downward slide. That gap is not just cosmetic, it represents millions of acre-feet of missing water. 
This widening deficit suggests that even if the spring of 2026 produces a strong runoff, the reservoir will be starting from a much lower elevation, limiting how much recovery can realistically occur before next summer. Another concern comes from the lower limit visible on the graph. The multi-year chart shows how close 2025 sits to levels that only a few years ago triggered emergency discussions about operational thresholds. Lake Powell historically becomes operationally constrained in the low 3530s, and while the lake is not yet back at those critical elevations, the trend line points unmistakably toward them. The current level of 3,542.56 feet is uncomfortably close, especially because the lake is still in the middle of the annual winter drawdown period. Winter traditionally brings slower inflows, yet downstream water obligations remain steady, meaning the lake is expected to continue falling for at least several more weeks. The rate of decline also matters. The recent daily change shows a drop of 0.09 feet in a single day, which may appear small, but sustained losses of this magnitude accumulate rapidly. At this rate, a single week can remove over half a foot. A full month can strip away nearly three feet. When the lake is already sitting at an elevation that leaves little margin for operational flexibility, a multi-month decline becomes a serious danger signal. This downward speed highlights the tight water budget that Lake Powell is currently trapped in. Inflow is not keeping up with outflow, and the reservoir is absorbing the imbalance directly. Hydropower production at Glen Canyon Dam also reacts sharply to these elevation changes. The operational side is unavoidable. Lower lake levels reduce hydraulic head, the water pressure required to run the turbines efficiently. As Powell slips deeper into the 35-40-foot range, hydropower becomes increasingly strained. If the lake were to approach elevations in the 35-25-foot range, the margin for generating power while protecting infrastructure narrows dramatically. Even elevations in the low 35-40s can push operations toward reduced efficiency, especially during summer demand peaks. Looking back at the recent high-flow years adds context to the danger of the current decline. In 2023, the lake rose rapidly from the low 3520s into the high 3580s, a rise of over 60 feet in a matter of months. The 2024 curve shows a similar rebound, cresting above the 3600-foot mark during the peak runoff period. Those years demonstrated the lake's ability to rise sharply when conditions allowed it. But 2025 breaks that pattern. The lake not only fails to reach those seasonal highs, but it also enters the summer already at a disadvantage, ultimately ending the year far below its recent seasonal averages. This comparison reveals the most alarming feature of the 2025 decline. The gap between 2025 and the healthier years before it continues to widen. While 2023 and 2024 displayed robust seasonal cycles with clear rises and gradual declines, the 2025 line shows one long subdued increase followed by a long and uninterrupted downward slide. That gap is not just cosmetic, it represents millions of acre-feet of missing water. This widening deficit suggests that even if the spring of 2026 produces a strong runoff, the reservoir will be starting from a much lower elevation, limiting how much recovery can realistically occur before next summer. Another concern comes from the lower limit visible on the graph. The multi-year chart shows how close 2025 sits to levels that only a few years ago triggered emergency discussions about operational thresholds. Lake Powell historically becomes operationally constrained in the low 3530s, and while the lake is not yet back at those critical elevations, the trend line points unmistakably toward them. The current level of 3,542.56 feet is uncomfortably close, especially because the lake is still in the middle of the annual winter drawdown period. Winter traditionally brings slower inflows, yet downstream water obligations remain steady. 
meaning the lake is expected to continue falling for at least several more weeks. The rate of decline also matters. The recent daily change shows a drop of 0.09 feet in a single day, which may appear small, but sustained losses of this magnitude accumulate rapidly. At this rate, a single week can remove over half a foot. A full month can strick away nearly three feet. When the lake is already sitting at an elevation that leaves little margin for operational flexibility, a multi-month decline becomes a serious danger signal. This downward speed highlights the tight water budget that Lake Powell is currently trapped in. Inflow is not keeping up with outflow, and the reservoir is absorbing the imbalance directly. Hydropower production at Glen Canyon Dam also reacts sharply to these elevation changes. The operational side is unavoidable. Lower lake levels reduce hydraulic head, the water pressure required to run the turbines efficiently. As Powell slips deeper into the 3,540-foot range, hydropower becomes increasingly strained. If the lake were to approach elevations in the 3,525-foot range, the margin for generating power while protecting infrastructure narrows dramatically. Even elevations in the low 3,540s can push operations toward reduced efficiency, especially during summer demand peaks. Looking back at the recent high flow years adds context to the danger of the current decline. In 2023, the lake rose rapidly from the low 3,520s into the high 3,580s, a rise of over 60 feet in a matter of months. The 2024 curve shows a similar rebound, cresting above the 3,600-foot mark. These increases were rare opportunities for recovery, but the fact that 2025 failed to capitalize on this momentum means the reservoir has started slipping backward again. The worry now is that the two-year recovery may not be enough to stabilize the long-term downward movement. As the lake enters the winter of 2025, the situation carries significant strategic implications. The reservoir has little buffer left to absorb operational stress. Future runoff will have to fight against a starting point far lower than expected. Downstream commitments will continue to pull water from the system. And the historical context offered by the multi-year chart shows that Powell is once again acting less like a reservoir recovering from previous lows and more like one trending back toward dangerous elevations. Another layer of concern emerges when we consider the annual hydrological rhythm. Powell typically bottoms out in late winter, often February or March, before the spring melt arrives. If the lake is already in the low 3,540s in early December, the next two to three months could push it into the upper 3,530s. This zone would represent one of the lowest seasonal starting points in modern operational history, placing enormous pressure on the 2026 runoff season to deliver a recovery strong enough to offset the ongoing imbalance. The risk of approaching lower critical elevations also affects water management planning. Historically, managers have relied on Powell's ability to rebound sharply in strong snow years. But with the reservoir now trending downward earlier than expected and with weaker seasonal rises, the flexibility to adapt becomes more constrained. The data in the charts show a pattern mathematically similar to years that preceded emergency operations discussions. While 2025 is not yet at that stage, the slope and direction of the line suggest that Powell is moving toward a position where small variations in inflow could have disproportionately large impacts. At this point in the analysis, the key takeaway is clear. Lake Powell's 2025 decline is not a normal seasonal curve. It is a warning signal. The year's data shows reduced spring gains, weaker inflow momentum, and an accelerated late year drop. When viewed against the backdrop of healthier years, the lake's 2025 trajectory falls well below expected resilience patterns. 
the combination of low starting elevation, sustained daily losses, and shrinking seasonal recovery margins all point toward a reservoir re-entering a phase of vulnerability. The numbers tell a simple but powerful story. Powell at 3,542 feet is not in immediate crisis, but it is unquestionably in a danger zone where one weak runoff year or an unexpectedly long winter drawdown could bring the lake back near the operational thresholds that dominated headlines just two years ago. The risk lies not just in today's level, but in the direction and speed of the curve heading into winter. If the downward trend continues at anything close to its current pace, early 2026 will place the reservoir at elevations that raise difficult questions about water allocation, hydropower reliability, and system stability. In closing, the 2025 data shows a reservoir losing ground at a time when it needed to hold steady. The decline is measurable, persistent, and sharper than historical averages. With the lake now sitting deep within the low 3,540s and trending downward, the situation demands attention. The next several months will determine whether Lake Powell stabilizes or slips toward elevations that could reshape operations across the entire Colorado River system. The charts make the danger clear, and the numbers confirm it. The decline unfolding at Lake Powell is not only real, it is becoming increasingly dangerous.